when you've actually built big businesses? You know how many people talk about building businesses but have never built a business, they just sell the business of building businesses? So for me, you need to figure out what, I keep telling kids that are trying to be experts, fuck being an expert, document going through it. The most interesting thing a 26 year old can tell me is living the life of a 26 year old and what's fresh and what's popping and what's corny and what's good and what's bad and what's hard. We need to be in a documenting society, not in a pontificating about shit you don't know what the fuck you're talking about society. You like that? It's funny. It's true. I watch every day. I consume content of like people commenting, like people are talking out of their ass. People don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You know how many people in here have opinions about TikTok and never posted once? You know how many people here have no clue about the stuff they talk about? We need to become practitioners, my friends. The thing that helps me have any audacity or the fire I'm trying to spit up here is I'm doing it every day. I'm creating content every day. I'm running ads every day. Then I have a company called VaynerMedia that's running a billion dollars in ads. I'm looking at data. I'm seeing the variables. I know for everybody in here who's trying to run Instagram swipe up ads and it's not working, it's not Instagram's fault, it's your content's fault. The variable of your success is your content, not the platforms. This is a foregone conclusion. Facebook dominates 45 to 90 year olds. It works every time. But is your video good enough? Is your picture good enough? Is your headline good enough? You know how many people here want to pop on Instagram but mail in the copy and they spend an hour and a half on the photo when the copy is half the battle? There is so much confusion in the system right now, my friends, and this is all happening during a phenomenally good economy. Let me, let me, let me give it to you in a way that's not fun to deliver. If you're not winning right now, you're in trouble because it's fucking easy out there. The economy's frothy as shit. There's money being thrown around left and right carelessly. The internet is still super underrated and if, you, if you're here, you know about it. And there's still a lot that don't. If you're not winning right now, you need to take a step back and realize you're either not in the right genre or not selling the right thing or you might have to realize you might just not be an entrepreneur, which is amazing. There's nothing wrong with not being one. The number four and the number nine and the number 13 at Netflix and Facebook made a lot more than the number one in 100% of the companies. This is one humongous game of self-awareness. There is a reason that you're not posting the level of content. There is a reason you don't have a podcast. There is a reason you don't have a vlog. And it stems from you're not comfortable producing. And whether that is because your mom was fucked up and she fucked you up, whether that's you're in a place where you just actually have nothing to say yet and actually have to live for another decade to put out stuff, whether that is you don't fully believe it, or what I'm most worried about, because I'm really starting to look at this action, you're just looking for it to happen too fast. I produced Wine Library TV five days a week for three years and nobody cared. Five days a week, three years, I spent seven, eight hours a day on Twitter in 2007, eight, nine, seven, eight, I used to go to sleep at four o'clock in the morning those years because I had to work my whole job and I believed so much in social and nobody knew who the fuck I was. So I had to go into every single conversation about wine and I didn't go in there and tell them to buy from Wine Library. I read Going to Napa this weekend by some random tech executive and I would jump in and literally explain to her six wineries she should check out, email Whitehall Lane and say, hey, can you give this person a VIP? I would spend 19 minutes, 19 minutes trying to set up this random person's VIP wine tours in Napa just to create context with one person. It would blow your mind to know how many people here ever spent 19 minutes, period, engaging with random people on Twitter to build awareness. A stunningly small percentage of this audience because nobody wants to do that work because it's hard. Everybody wants to make some miraculous piece of content that's gonna make them viral and make them rich to buy a fucking island in Jamaica and smoke weed all day. Everybody sees it now. Everybody sees it now. 
people see the results. That classic fucking thing where they show like the iceberg and you see the, t you know that fucking photo? That shit is real. People see it now. People are confused about how much time and effort and work it's put in. It takes a lot of work to produce 10 different pieces of content to put on LinkedIn every single day about your craft. That takes work. I just, we, listen, and we are living in a time right now where hustle culture is getting shit on and I get dragged into it, but I promise you this, I'm not trying to make anybody burn out or be unhappy, but let there be no confusion to this room. Work ethic is part of the fucking formula. It just is. It just is. It might not be fun, but like, look, you're talking to somebody who put in zero work ethic into school because I fucking hated that shit, and so I know what it feels like to not be motivated to put in the work. If you are not motivated to put in the work that I'm talking about, you are in the wrong game. You need to take a step back and find something you're interested in. The amount of people that I know can start a media site, a YouTube channel, an Instagram, a TikTok, a podcast and a vlog around the most narrow shit, Star Trek, the Rams, pumpkins, like, like narrow ass shit and make 100, 200,000 a year being super happy about talking the thing that they love, bird fucking houses. <laughs> Do you understand that somebody in here can make $200,000 a year talking and making content around bird houses because for some unknown reason they fucking love bird houses? <laughs> Yet, because it's only 200,000, in our current culture, that's not good enough. It's a billion or bust. It's a hundred million. I gotta be a millionaire. The one top 1% one of earners in America make 440,000 and up. If you make $440,000 a year or higher, you're in the top 1% of one of the richest countries, if not the richest country in the world. Yet our culture doesn't even begin to give you credit until you're a millionaire. It's fucking stupid. And we have a lot of people grossly unhappy because they're chasing shit to spend money to buy dumb shit to impress people they don't even like. Yeah. My friends, I come here this afternoon to talk about a couple of things. Number one, until this room especially and the greater 300 million people in this country redefine success into waking up in the morning and being happy versus money, we will be in a bad place. stuff can get very cliche. If you're happy, it will come. But I'm watching. I'm watching. And like, making money is a talent. We accept making, we, we accept being a basketball player is a talent. We accept being an incredible artist and singing is a talent. For some reason, we've created massive delusion around everybody can make money. It's hard. It's an actual talent. And we have to have that conversation because when we do, it can start getting us into way better conversations for this room, which is what are you destined to do? What are you capable of doing? What makes you happy? How does it go well? To me, that's where it gets interesting. We live in a time where the internet is hit scale and it's still underpriced. We're so fortunate. Our great grandparents couldn't turn a side hustle into their real life. They had to work nine to five and the world shut down. There was no internet. This internet thing is a blessing. We're demonizing it because what the internet's also doing is exposing us. The internet's not changing us. By the way, all the shit we're up to, all the terrible things we're up to, thank God the internet's around. A lot of us needed to see that to realize it was happening. We were delusional, we're being exposed, we're not being changed. On the flip side, that same power to actually expose us is the most powerful, my friends, I see a lot of you recording, holding up your phones. You are sitting with a computer in your pocket right now that is more powerful than the computer that Ronald Reagan had to run the free world. That is facts. That is bonkers ass shit. You can literally post a video right now on a platform. Listen, again, I am the byproduct of understanding where organic reach was on tilt and went all in. Whether that was search, whether that was you know, email, whether that was Google AdWords, and then later YouTube, and then later Facebook and Twitter. Right now, 
with no followers on TikTok and LinkedIn. None. Zero. You don't have a count. You can go home right now. Somebody left a comment today and we looked. Somebody whose first video on TikTok got 400,000 views. We have, yeah. f there's free awareness. There's free awareness and all you have to do is execute. And it costs nothing. I love people, some, you know, I've been talking a lot about Instagram's organic reach going down, right? Which has a lot of people worried. And I saw a comment last night where this woman was like, fuck Instagram, it's all these corporations, it's just corporate greed, they just want you to buy ads. And I'm like, motherfucker, this shit is free. <laughs> Instagram is free. And by the way, you've been around now for a while. This is not 1997 anymore. These platforms have shown you that the organic reach is free, then supply and demand kicks in, and they're running a business. What, are you the only one that's allowed? What, you selling bullshit Botox tea on the platform that's free is okay, but them not making some money, is it? opportunistic time in the history of mankind for communication. Nobody, if I was given this talk in 1979, nobody here, including myself, could afford shooting a satellite into space to have a TV network. Nobody up here was dropping 100 million on a printing press. We are the media. All you have to do is make. We are the media. All you have to do is make. And even with that mitzvah, with that great opportunity of a lifetime, one that everybody that lived before us would break their arms off to be living here right now at this time with this cost to be able to build awareness about their thing, even with all that, you're not making. You can imagine why I have zero tears for the collective. It is very hard for me to feel sad for anybody who isn't making content at scale when the blueprint is black and white. Please, my friends, please use this energy of this talk to do the following. Number one, go back home and figure out what kind of communicator are you. Not everybody is outrageously handsome and charismatic on film. <laughs> Some of you are just great at writing. As a matter of fact, let me use writing as an example. I think writing is grossly underestimated. You can crush on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. I think if you look at the content that's popping on Instagram, a photo that's fine with an incredible two or three paragraphs has enormous potential. I think more people should use Instagram as a blog. And back to blogs, the only time since 1997 did I myself to this moment not take full advantage of the underpriced moment of its time, it was actually blogging from 2001 to 2004. I am not capable of writing. You know, I couldn't afford ghostwriters to transcribe the words that are captured on film like I can now. So I had to let that era go, frustrated, but I knew that I couldn't communicate. Back in 2004, before I used Google, and by the way, autocorrect saved my, I couldn't spell shit in 2002. So, I remember that frustration, but I sit here today and I implore all of you, number one, who are you as a communicator? Do you write? I think memos on the phone with random thoughts where you just record it, I mean, heck, use your video, let it be a picture of the floor and record your thoughts. If you're insecure on video, just record the thoughts, record it and post it. If you're not communicating often, daily, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snap, YouTube, TikTok, podcast. If you're not doing that, you're not in the game. There's no more time left. This is not debatable anymore. You are not in the game. Somebody else is taking your attention. We're not consuming content the same ways anymore. Everybody you're trying to reach is available at such a low cost in this environment. I, I, I can't, I can't figure out the words, the piece of content, the thing to get you to finally let go. And, and it, by the way, and I've never said this publicly, if this is because of deep insecurity, you need to go see a therapist and get that poison out. There is something holding back. 
that I need to figure out the enthusiastic crowd that has so much love for me and I have so much for them, 80% of the people stand up knowing that LinkedIn and TikTok is the underpriced place from the guy who's been right now for 15 years about the underpriced place and yet you still don't make. I have to figure that out. We have to figure that out. Let me, let me try to chip away at figuring it out. Let's make up some new rules. Rule number one, you post something and somebody replies that you're ugly. <laughs> somebody replies that you're a fucking idiot and you don't know what you're talking about. That you're a clown. That you're this, that you're that. Why? Why are we affected by that instead of, why don't we start deploying compassion and empathy for people that have anonymous accounts, consume your content, and then have time to leave negativity? When I see people shit on me, I feel bad for them. I don't have time to consume content of people that I admire, let alone people that I think are fuck faces. <laughs> I'm hoping that one person here who's crippled by negative feedback, and that's why she or he doesn't post, which I believe is actually a stunningly high percentage of this room. Because of the way they grew up, their, their self-esteem, a million different variables. I'm just trying to get somebody here to realize that that negativity actually should be something that you feel bad for the other person, not for you. I, I genuinely believe that, bro. I feel bad for them. Who's got time for nonsense? I don't know. Number two, something I'm super proud of. My sister yesterday posted something. And I had this crazy trip when I spoke in Asia last year that I took my sister, and my sister, is wired very differently than me. I'm pure optimism and positivity. She's cynicism, she is, and she's, she's grown up more insecure than me, and yesterday she posted something and it reminded me of something, and I'm glad she did because it's gonna inspire me to tell you this. I believe one of the biggest reasons that people in here don't post is because they're actually sitting with a secret or two and have real insecurities, and that secret is the jail of their life and they don't want to put themselves out there because subconsciously or consciously, they realize that that thing will then come out. And I believe that that is the next thing I want to talk to you about, which is what I call the eight mile rule. If you, how many people here have seen Eight Mile, the Eminem movie? Woo! Do yourself. What he does at the end of that movie is something I think about a lot. He goes into the final battle rap, and he starts first, and he takes a complete and utter shit on himself. Instead of dissing the other person, he spends the entire rap making fun of himself, leaving the other person nothing to say. I believe one of the breakthrough moments of this talk, for, and I'm, by the way, I've gotten real practical about the way I speak. I'm hoping to get one person to do this tonight. If I can get one person to leave this conference right now, go to their car, take their iPhone, put on the lights, and make a video, and say some shit that they've been keeping a secret for their whole life and put it out there, they would be blown away by a couple of things. Number one, how little anybody gives a fuck. <laughs> My friends, the high school zit rule, as I call it, all of us were scared shitless when we had a big fucking zit. We just didn't realize that when we went into school, they had their own zits. They had their own shit. We're so worried about our shit, like we're the center of the universe. You know what allows me to be super happy? Is I think I'm the best that I'm gonna achieve so much, and I know if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, that I'll trend on Twitter for a couple hours and you'll all move on your way. When you realize that you're great, or you're hungry, or you're trying, but you also realize you're nothing, when you can balance that, you're unstoppable. My friends, you're holding a secret. Thank you. You're holding a secret right now. All of you, because we all do. All of us. You're holding a secret that you will be stunned that nobody gives a fuck about. You turn your phone, you tell the world X, Y, and Z, you will be stunned by the freedom that that opens up in your life, and more importantly, by how little. And by the way, if there was ever a time to put out your secrets, it's right now. There's so much shit going on, that nobody, does, nobody cares that you didn't actually graduate college, or that you did this, or you did that. Like, nobody gives a fuck. So, if I get one of you, thank you, if I get one of you, just one of you, 
to leave here. And by the way, if you do it, if you've got it in you, DM me, hit me up on Twitter. I will share it. I will absolutely share it. Go on there, put the video, and don't do some bullshit one because you want to get some awareness from me. Fuck you guys. I know how you go. <laughs> don't make it up. I need some real ass shit. I need to see your auntie in there saying, oh fuck, I can't believe you did this. <laughs> I will spend the next year to three years, and it's the first time I've shared this. A lot of you consume my content. I've never talked about what I just talked about. This thought of there's something you're holding in that you're scared will get exposed if you get too big, thus you're suppressing yourself. I will continue to add new things to my repertoire because I'm thinking about every single thing that is stopping you from actually posting every day 50 times a day. One of the things that allows me to go so hard is I'm not scared. I'm eight mile. I am what I am. It's all been easy for me. Like, it is what it is. I'm living on the record. I have 25 people in my inbox and my D people have access to all my shit. I'm not worried. I'm not living in the shadows. And I don't want you either because when you don't, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot easier. <laughs> I think about this era in American history as one step back or two steps forward because we had to deal with a lot of collective pain. Forget your political status or things of nature. We are seeing so much of what we need to see and in that is such a great opportunity. I genuinely believe that. I think one thing that I am noticing already is people are at least challenging themselves to have a little bit more compassion and empathy. They're starting to understand some of the nuances. Right now we're still in a little bit of like holding our ground, but we're getting tired. You know, people, what's great about humans is we're grossly underrated. This is why we're still here. Deep down we are very good collectively. And so I'm starting to see that and in that, I hope that encourages you to realize everybody's got something. Everybody's got something. It's true. And so, whether it's you're insecure, the judgment of others stops you from making, and I'm hoping that I made you realize you shouldn't feel bad for you, you feel bad for them. Whether it's you got some sort of secret that you think is fucked up, but in the reality of things, it's okay. I mean, look, if you murder somebody, you might want to keep that shit. But, <laughs> but you know, but like, put it out there, let go, you will be blown away. That might be the unlock. By the way, and this next one's very real, I think a lot of you actually don't believe in what you're selling. I think one of the things that's holding you back, and one of the things that allows me to go so hard, is I actually think somewhere deep down you don't believe in it. You believe in the money that comes along with it, but deep down you don't believe in it, and your moral compass, even if it's hidden deep in your gut, isn't letting you go all the way. So number three is please take a look at what you're selling. I think a lot of you don't believe in it because a lot of it is based around you and you know you haven't done that thing yet. You're just posturing. There's way too many people that still believe in fake it till you make it without realizing the internet changed that game. It was easy to fake it till you make it in the 1980s. Nobody knew what the fuck was going on. <laughs> now it's real hard. Because data's everywhere. And so I'd highly recommend you give that some thought. And finally this. If I could wish one thing for this room as a tactic that is completely left field, it is for you to go and donate some of your time to a retirement home. I've been talking a lot about it, I used to do it way back when. Thank you. I'm actually gonna do, I think we got, we got one scheduled for February, I think, right for the vlog? So, here's why I like it. I think there's an incredible opportunity for a lot of people in here to go and volunteer eight hours of their time at their local retirement home. Because I think spending time with people in their 90s, 80s, hundreds that aren't your grandparents is an incredible perspective. I think what you'll learn if you spend time with them is regret is really scary. So much of who I am is the fact that in my early years as a kid, I would spend a lot of time with the grandparents of my friends. I was always drawn to the much older than me. In that, something triggered, and I kept building on that in my 20s, which is, Regret scares me. There's, I've never seen anything that scares me as much as sitting with somebody in their 80s or 90s who spends all their time talking to me and not about not what they did, but what they wish they did. And in that, 
there's something that I think could really work here, and here's what I mean by that. I believe that if everybody in this room had a better relationship with understanding time, they could be much happier. I feel like people are grossly impatient. I don't think that people that are 55 years old realize they have 20 more years of executing in a world where they grew up as kids and 55 seems so old and people are dying at a different age and retiring at a different age. I think if you actually saw regret up close and personal for one day, that a lot of the things that you're not doing, that it could scare you into doing it. I live a life already where people email me on a tactical level the regret that they wish they listened to me around this, that, or the other thing three or four or five years ago. I am good at my craft, which means today I can tell you about TikTok and LinkedIn and tomorrow might be something else, and if they all go off the face of the earth and it's all new stuff, I'll be great at that too because my singular skill is what consumers do, the behavior of you, not the platform of the moment. I will spend probably the rest of my life trying to figure out how to unlock people that make, because communication is always the foundation of success. Your relationships with your loved ones, your employees, your customers, your audience is completely predicated on communication. because there's some new platform called Lipstick or Cloudface <laughs> or Ha Ha. <laughs> and I talk about all the people that won on TikTok and LinkedIn. And by the way, if TikTok becomes Vine, let me remind everybody this. Vine had a year run, right? One year, right? But, as you know, my friend and everybody else here, hundreds of the people that built their fame, their awareness on Vine, went on to leverage that on Snap, and now we're some of the biggest people on Instagram, and are some people, like, attention comes with you. My friends, the reason I build me, not anything else but me, not Instagram expert 49, not <laughs> crypto guy six, no, me, is because it comes with me. If all of these disappear, if they all disappear, if the government comes along and says, they're all outlawed, and now we're doing our own thing like China, and there's one app, haha.com, when you sign up, you're gonna type in Gary VEE to find me on that platform. It comes with you. And so, thank you. And so, please take advantage of the underpriced opportunities right now. Please figure out how to make content that's good for them, not for you. I come up here and I give a talk for this 45 minutes that's good for you, not good for me. You understand? That is what you need to do when you produce content. It doesn't need to be a piece of content that's actually a top of the funnel thing to get them into your funnel, to get them into conversion. It needs to be something that actually brings someone value, period, end of story, see ya, to build emotion and equity. My friends, when this is all said and done, it's gonna end up very simple. Whoever brings the most value to their audience will win. We love Amazon because we get stuff at good prices delivered to us the next day. We like that. You may not like other things they do or this, that, and the other thing or whatever is your political point, whatever, but you like getting what you want at the best price immediately. We, as humans, to get what we want, have to figure out how to bring value to them in the places where they consume information until you figure that out, you'll keep looking for the hack, the one that doesn't exist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, LA. Love you guys. Thank you so much.